Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching, hanging out, all that stuff. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well. Staying safe, taking care of yourselves and all that stuff. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today I'm an On One Photo Raw 2021, or Photo Raw as it's uh, more easily uh, called. And you know, one of the things I like about it, and I've been, I did a video in fact about some of the things I like about uh, the new version and the product as a whole. And I'm kind of working through because as I've said in uh, previous videos, I'm considering replacing Lightroom with something else. On One is a contender. There's a lot of capability. It's a great product. It does a lot. And one of the things that it does is HDR. Now, I've historically done my HDR in Aurora HDR, and I honestly have no plans to change that. I, I love Aurora. I think it's great, and I'll continue to use it. Uh, admittedly, I don't do HDR as much as I used to, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to see how well the HDR works in Photo Raw, just to see if it's something that's cool that I could potentially use maybe sometimes um, when I'm using Photo Raw. So here I am, I'm in a file uh, or a folder, I should say, of images from Venice, Italy from a number of years ago, back when we could travel. I've got a set of brackets here and I picked them on purpose because there's some ghosting in it and I kind of want to just run through a test to see what the HDR merge function uh, looks like here. So there's three images, I've select them. You just come, uh, after you select them, you click on HDR on the right hand side and it'll begin the merging process and create a preview for you as it says here. Okay, so here we are, here's a default HDR. Now there's a number of different things that are going on here. It's kind of in surreal mode. I'm gonna change that to natural just so that it's a bit more natural looking. But what I wanna walk through is what are some of the functions that you can do with an HDR within Photo Raw because there's actually quite a few. And obviously it pairs well with their develop module and all the filters and tools that you can use to adjust the image. So it's a nice um, complete package, I guess, for lack of a better word. So this is the uh, kind of the preview window and where you can make adjustments to how the HDR is treated. In this bottom left corner, as you can see here, I've got these three raw files. The reference image is kind of your base um, reference image for your HDR is the one that has this little uh, aperture window selected. So if I click over here, I'm now selecting that as my reference image. And because it's a darker exposure, the overall blended HDR is darker. And conversely, if I click on this one over here, it's the brightest of the three. And as a result, the blended HDR image is brighter. So I'm gonna go back to the base center exposure being the reference image for the HDR. There's also check marks. And these check marks basically allow you to select or deselect images from being included in that bracket set. So if I wanna reduce, or excuse me, remove the dark one, I've just removed it. And of course, my merged exposure uh, bracket has, be, uh, has now brightened. I'm gonna turn that back on and include that. And what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and uncheck the bright one. And of course, the blended HDR has become darker. So I'm gonna keep all three of these because I like the overall blended effect. Now that we've got that out of the way, you can of course see the exposure values, negative two, zero, and positive two. You've got de-ghosting here. So uh, you can turn it off if you don't think you need any here because of the boats, I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and say hi. And there's a cool thing here where you can click on this and say show ghosting. And it's gonna highlight the areas where ghosting is likely gonna be present. So if I reduce this to low, you can see that that's basically gone away. There's very low um, de-ghosting going on in that case. But I'm gonna go ahead and click high because of the boats and the water and all the things that could be moving. I'm gonna say uh, turn off that show ghosting. And then of course here you've got different looks that you can default to. There's natural, there's natural auto. That one's quite a bit brighter as you can see. And I kind of like that, but it's a little too bright, uh, but that's okay. Um, you've got Surreal, which is gonna increase kind of that HDR look to it. And then you've got Surreal Auto, and that one is, is kind of like the original uh, auto that I showed you, but a little bit crunchier and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna go back to Natural Auto. I kind of like that a little bit better. It's a little bit tamer. Um, and then, uh, you know, align or not. And of course, I do want them to align. That's one of the reasons, um, or I should say that's, that's one of the key things. If you ever shoot handheld, you're gonna wanna click align because that is gonna align the brackets for you. If you're shooting on a tripod, you probably don't have to worry about that. Next, you can choose to open in different areas. You can choose to open in the develop module. 
I did a video about the develop module. If you want to check it out there, lots of capabilities. Um, you can also return to browse, which would basically put it back in the library without any further edits, or you can choose to open in effects. I'm going to choose effects, and that's because if you look over here, part of this menu is tone and color, and that is basically what you get in the develop module anyway. So you can go ahead and do that here, including camera profiles, for example. So if you want to use a landscape or portrait or vivid, you know, you can see all these different things. I'm going to use the on one standard and then you can go into manual and make some adjustments here. So I might increase that exposure a little bit and I'm just kind of playing. I don't really have a plan for the photo. I'm going to pull the highlights down. I'm going to increase contrast a little bit. You can see that these sliders have already been adjusted and that's based on the, uh, the selection that I made down here in the look category. Okay. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and lift shadows a tiny bit and I, I might add a little bit of structure. I'm probably going to pull the temperature slightly to the left to give it a little bit cooler look. It was slightly past sunset, but not quite blue hour. Maybe give it a little bit of tint and maybe give it a little bit of vibrance. And again, I'm just kind of winging it here. I don't have a particular plan for the photo, but there we go. I'm going to go ahead and hit save and drop that photo into the effects panel or effects module. And then you can go from there to further customize the image. Okay, here we go. Here's my photo. So it basically dropped it because I selected such. Um, it, it dropped it into the effects panel where I can go in and further add filters and that sort of things to customize the look. Here's the HDR look that was applied. There's the before and there's the current state. And now I can come in here with uh, add filter and do kind of whatever I want. Now, I don't really have the desire to go in and add a whole bunch of more filters to this. I kind of like it the way it is. I think the only thing I might would do is give it a little bit of warmth. So I'm going to go into the sunshine filter and I'm just going to drag that warmth a little bit to the right. And I kind of like how that's doing that. Maybe pull up the saturation a little bit. Um, it's fairly, you know, fairly colorful, a lot of blue. There's not a whole lot of warmth. Uh, in fact, I actually might just try hitting strong. No, I'm going to go glow. Nope. I'm going to go with natural and then just keep go, go back to where I was with adding some warmth and a little bit of saturation. I think I like that better, but you can always turn this off. If you want to look, there it is before and there it is after, after I think I've warmed that up a nice amount. I just wanted to test out the HDR and kind of see what it looked like. Let me uh, do a preview. There it is. Now that's the reference image, which as I understand it, that should be the middle exposure bracket because that's what I had as the reference image, but there it is before and there it is current state as an HDR. And of course, if I do the sliding window, you can see that as well. There's before and after. So I'm going to turn that back off and go to the full preview window. So there's a quick, uh, how, how does it work kind of video? How does, you know, kind of testing out the HDR function in on one photo raw 2021. There's nothing new about it, as I understand it, compared to the previous version, but not really having used the previous version very much. I was kind of curious because I have all these files and folders and it's really easy because of the browse module in photo raw to just go find them, grab a set of brackets, drop them in HDR. And then if you want to do further customization, go here to the effects panel and just do so. I like the photo the way it is. I think it looks nice. I think the ghosting looks pretty good. It's not perfect over here. If I zoom in, you can see there's still a little bit of movement there, but I think overall like these, uh, these sticks that, that tend to move a little bit, I think this boat over here looks good and these other boats look good. It's just this first boat and that second boat, they seem to have moved a little bit. Honestly, even with, um, you know, number one, a single exposure, you're likely to get movement anyway, unless it's a really, really quick exposure. And number two, it doesn't really bother me a whole lot. I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just looking for how well does it merge? I think it did a, a good job of controlling. And remember, I didn't choose the strongest setting. I just choose very high for ghosting or de-ghosting, I should say. And actually on a photo like this, I kind of expect a little bit of movement. So again, it doesn't bother me. I think it's a fine job. I've yet to do a comparison between this and Aurora HDR. I might do that in a future video, but more than anything, I just kind of wanted to do a test drive of the HDR function in Photo Raw, see how it holds up. And I would say overall, I give it a, you know, a thumbs up. I think it looks good. And the fact that you can quickly go from your bracket set in your browse module to you know, blending the HDR with the different adjustments you can make, including the adjustments in the develop pane that shows up in the preview window, and then dropping it into effects to add additional effects and uh, adjustments to the photo. I think that's pretty cool. It's a nice combined all-in-one sort of approach, and it works well. That's all I've got in this one. Just again, just a test drive of the HDR function in On One Photo Raw 2021. 
Hope it gives you some ideas or maybe some insights into how it works if you haven't used it yet. If you have any questions, let me know down below, and I'll see you soon with another video, my friends. Hope you uh, are staying safe, taking care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon, and adios.